Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a quick video about using the Capacitor Google Map plugin in Vue.js. So how I got here. So if we come here to the Capacitor Google Map documentation, if we scroll down to where it says full examples, you will see that there's only an Angular example, a React example, and a JavaScript example. There is no Vue.js example. So with the help of some folks in Discord and kind of reading through these examples here, um, I created my own example that I'm gonna walk you through here. Um, just kind of briefly, because I also have a full blog post that kind of walks you through every single page that's in here, the code that goes along with it, the variables that are defined, um, all of the functions, and then in some cases where there also all the templates and then if you scroll down, there's some cases where we actually have uh, imports and properties. I walk through all those and explain it. And then down here at the bottom of the blog post, I also provide the full source code, um, which is in my GitHub repo here. So this video, so as, I, as I always say, some people learn from reading, some people learn from watching, and some people need the combination, so this is the combination. This uh, I'm just going to walk through it using it on iOS. Um, I did have to make some changes to get it to work appropriately in a web view. Let's fire up a web view so that that's available when um, I get done explaining it. Uh, notice I am using the Ionic Microsoft Studio plugin. I highly recommend you utilize it. It will make your life a lot easier. Um, so let's see if I can just quickly show you the behavior that I'm seeing in the web view, which is why I changed it. So if we go, let's go back to the app. So you see here when I click, I get this info window. You don't get an info window in the web view. So one of the changes I made was in the web view, I just pop, right now I just have random information, in it, but this is just a modal. So I display a modal when you um, click on the marker in the web view. Other than that, it's the same code being used for both um, the mobile application and the uh, web application. I'm just gonna kind of, like I said, since I've already had the blog post, I'll just quickly walk through the video. Uh, one other change that I identified that you needed to make to get it to work. Please note that here inside my Vite config, I did need to handle this um, compiler option for this uh, custom element for the capacitor Google map that you see here inside of the map component on the template, this capacitor Google map. Um, so that's just one thing to definitely make sure you notice in your vconfig. Also, I have my uh, map key inside a .env file. So here where I use my map key, I'm using this import meta environment to get the map key loaded into the uh, Google Map Create. So let's go back to the beginning. So there's no real changes to main JS, main TS. As I say in all my V videos, you do not have to use Ionic Framework. I just use Ionic Framework because it's comfortable to me and I use it as a structure of the app. This app will work, I mean, this plugin can work in a plain Vue.js application. I mean, Vue.js mobile application that you could potentially style with Tailwind or any other UI component that you want. So there's no, no changes in here, nothing magical. Nothing magical in my app view either. My router just routes to one page, which is my home page. And if you can see in my home page, I have this my map component that I have in here. I, I apologize because I don't believe that I'm using this um, ion pop-up anymore. So I'll delete it from the regular GitHub. I am not using the ion pop-up. I am using the ion modal to display the, uh, the modal window. Um, so in my home page, I have a map component and that is pretty much it. And then let's take a look at the map component. Well, let, let's see what we're passing it. So here in my map component, I'm passing it marker data, which is the array of items that are rendered on the list. And I am listening for a map clicked event and a marker clicked event. Um, those are the two listeners that I have. So if we go inside the my map component, you'll see one of the tricks that I needed to resolve was getting this 
Um, if you see here on the on on mounted, I'm doing the create map. The the trick, well not the trick, but basically what's happening is that I need to make sure that my element, my DOM element that's holding that's going to hold the map is on the page before I attempt to call the Google create Google Map create. And so if you look, if we scroll up to the, we'll scroll down to the template. Where's the template here? Um, this is the reference to the uh, Google Map component, capacitor Google Map component. And so what I'm doing here inside my on load, or, I mean, sorry, on my on mounted, is getting this reference, waiting for the next tick, because then at that point I know the DOM has been updated, and then I go and I create my map. Here I'm trying to clean up the markers as um, we unmap, unmount the component. Haven't exactly worked out all of this because, as you know, when you're using Ionic, the, um, what is it called, the page is going to stay in memory. And so I'm not necessarily certain if this thing is getting cached out when the user switches the pages. But if we start at the top here, I'm defining the properties, and I'm, I'm using TypeScript. Uh, for the marker array that's getting passed in, I'm going to define the events that I emit, which is when the map is clicked and when a marker is clicked. Um, here's a reference for the ref. Here's IDs for the markers because it's kind of weird how they do it. After you create a map marker, it gives you the IDs. And so to actually remove the map markers, you need to remove the marker IDs. There's no way to just clear all of the mark. Just tell the map, just clear every single marker. You have to actually pass it. Um, the marker IDs, and then where is it? You have to actually pass it marker IDs to remove an array of marker IDs to remove it. You can't just say remove everything. All right, so that's what that is for. Um, then I have this add some markers, which basically takes the marker data, loops through it all, and adds the markers to the map. And then down here is the actual create map function. This comes straight from the documentation, and it's how you get it, um, the map on your page. You pass it the reference, you pass it an API key, a center location, and a zoom. Then I add some markers, and then down here, I create my event listeners. And so this is um, a marker for when you click on a map Sorry, this is an event listener for when you click on a map marker, and this is an event listener for when you click on the map. I'm not really doing anything with the on map but I just wanted to demonstrate how it's done. So the, the main challenge uh, that I had without a example was basically figuring out how to address confirming that the item was on the page before I attempted to create map. And as you can see here, I've resolved it with this on mounted. I'm certain there's other ways to do it. I'm looking forward to suggestions or recommendations that people send regarding it. Um, and I'd be happy to kind of do a follow-up vi follow video if someone sees something here that is uh, missing or inappropriate. Um, the other component that I have here is this marker info window, and this is the window that pops up in the web browser. This is the marker info window that's popping up, and basically right now all I'm doing is I'm just JSON stringifying the data that's associated with the marker. And if we go back to my map, let's see how am I making that guy show. I think it's on my home page. So if you look here on map clicked, where is it? Uh, so here's my, not on map clicked, on marker clicked. Let's go back up here. On marker clicked. So what we want to do, actually, I can go up here, I believe. On marker, so marker clicked. So marker clicked, if it's, if it's not the native platform, meaning it's the web, I know that, that the uh, capacitor plugin is not going to handle my info window. Then I call this open modal function, and I get the marker that was clicked based on the information that was passed in. So this get marker info, since the unique identifier in the marker should be a combination of latitude and longitude, that's how I find the specific marker that was clicked. So now I have the actual marker info, and then based on the marker info, I call open modal. And on open modal, I use the modal controller to create a new um, modal. 
I pass in the uh, component that I want to be in the modal. When I pass in the modal component, this marker info window, I pass in the property, which is the marker. And then uh, because I'm kind of using the panel from the bottom, I set the breakpoint of um, how high I want it to go. I set the backdrop to false and, and click on backdrop, dismiss the true so that you can just click on the backdrop to hide the modal. And then when modal goes away, I don't really want to do anything with the value. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I highly recommend that you take a look at the uh, source code that I provided here inside of um, GitHub. Also, feel free to take a look at the blog post where I go in just a lot more detail explaining everything that's happening. Uh, like I said, short video. Hopefully you found this valuable. Uh, please make, let me just get back to the top of this. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Also share the blog post. I think it's uh, very helpful too. Thanks for everything and I will chat with you later. Bye.